Hello, Leo. Welcome to your weekly tarot reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is for the week of January 8th through January 14th. Please like, comment, and definitely subscribe to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Now we're going to take a look into your general energies. We're going to see if there are any messages that want to come through, any kind of situation that's on your mind. What is the biggest uh, kind of event in your life? What is it that you need to know for this coming week? We've got a Four of Swords. All right, so there could be, well, there could be some rest. There could be some recuperation. There could be some kind of resolution to a conflict that you might be involved with now. But let's take a look at these cards here. We're going to do our Dove and Serpent spread. Interesting, interesting. We're going to do our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. We're going to leave that right over there. And we're not going to look at that until the very end of the video, so please stick around. And hopefully that will, you know, tie the reading together, give us the confirmation that we're looking for right at the very end. So, uh, just taking a quick look, we have some water, some air, some air, some earth, some water some air, some water. Okay, there's not really a lot of fire going on here, okay? But the the one thing that we do have that's fire related, and this I think really makes up for the lack of fire anywhere else, is this 11th mystery of the tarot, the lust or strength card. This is the card that rules Leo. So I think it's gonna be a very, very important time in your life this week, okay? I think the energy is really one where the kind of the best qualities of your Leo nature are going to come out, okay? I really think that you have the um, the best chance this week of accomplishing anything you set your mind to, okay? So I really want to emphasize this, and anything else that we see in the reading is kind of going to be overpowered by your own, like, spiritual essence, you know, your own power, your own um, intention, your own spirit and and fire energy okay so this is a really important card what i see this week really being about is this four okay this four of swords is is talking a little bit about either a period of rest or or a resolution to some conflict that you you have been in recently so it's kind of like you're getting a break from that that conflict there was some kind of attention some kind of um some kind of friction in the communication with someone close to you in your life. Um, I think they might be an air sign person because of some more cards that we have on the path of the serpent. We'll get to those in a minute. But I think that there was some kind of conflict with them. There was some breakdown of communication, some kind of a, almost like a stalemate. I'm getting a feeling like the two of you had differing opinions and um, there's really not not a, a like a not really a resolution but there's a cessation of the arguing you know what i mean there's a little bit of a rest from the arguing there hasn't been an agreement i don't think but there isn't there isn't active fighting right now all right um and again i want to emphasize this leo nature we're going to just kind of put this card up here and just put it over there so we can keep an eye on it because I think that is really the major energy in this week for you is going to be your fiery Leo energy right your um, your consistency your power your endurance right because Leo is that fixed fire sign so it has that like staying power it has like the long lasting action okay so it really is this energy that can endure a lot of hardship. And I think with this kind of uh, stalemate, I feel like you're stubborn enough to just keep this going indefinitely. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think you're going to be the one to, um, to reach out or to apologize or to get the conversation going again. I think whoever this person is, um, they're, they're going to have to make the first move, right? Because I, I feel like you are stubborn enough this week that you're you're, you're going to have no motivation no impulse to really reach out and try to resolve this thing you're okay with it being like just some radio silence for a while okay because i think you kind of are wanting that break anyway you're wanting this kind of cooling off period uh this period of just resting and not having to engage in this uh, i think it has to do with some sort of an ending in your life and that could be why there's this this conflict with this person, okay? Maybe this is a relationship that ended, maybe a, a business relationship, a personal relationship, could be a romantic thing. Um, 
I think there there was it, it just kind of it just kind of fell apart, right? It wasn't anyone's fault. There wasn't any particular event that happened. It just kind of was done. It's it's time was over. You know what I mean? It's like this death card here. This is something that's inevitable. This is something we can't really change. We could try to prolong it. We could try to stave it off as long as possible, but this is coming, okay? And I think it's the same with this relationship. I think that it's just run its course. Um, it was a temporary thing to begin with, and maybe the two of you tried to extend it for as long as possible, but um, it just was done. There's nothing more that that could have really been gotten out of it. It just, it, it was a temporary thing. I think it's run its course. Um, but now there's this kind of, the two of you aren't really talking. So I don't know if you're still in the process of dissolving this relationship, right? But that final kind of, uh, that, you know, that exit conversation hasn't really happened yet. And I think with this Leo energy, I think you're quite stubborn and you're not going to be the one to really reach out and have the closure, have that final resolution, that final conversation. But I feel like this thing is is pretty much dissolved. The two of you are apart, but I still feel like there's that last conversation that, that needs to be, it needs to happen eventually, but I don't think it's happening now. Right now is the kind of the period in between, the kind of after this death card kind of um, situation after that manifested and the relationship has dissolved. Now there's this period of just kind of waiting, resting, recuperating, gathering yourself together. Um, a little bit of peace before you have to go and do that uncomfortable, like final interview or that final conversation or that closure. Okay. Because this could be a professional relationship. It's not necessarily romantic. All right. Uh, in the immediate future, yeah, I do see that you're going to be having that difficult conversation, that that exit interview, that, um, you know, that closure discussion. And it's really, you're going to have to willingly put yourself through that. It's just something that you have to endure. Um, again, professional or personal could be uh, in the workplace, could be your romantic situation. I feel like it needs to happen, and I think it will relatively soon. Maybe in the next couple weeks, you're going to have this um, kind of final, this final conversation. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be actually pretty miserable, I think. But it's something that needs to happen for you to move on, for there to be this kind of closure, for there to be the resolution, and um, for this cycle, this phase to be completed. Okay. I wonder if this is going to be a four of wands. What we see, um, let's go beneath the surface here. Let's go underneath it all. We have this 10 of cups. Now, this is a relationship or an association, partnership, romantic or platonic, professional, whatever, that at one point was very fulfilling. Okay. It was working. Things were good. There was a lot of productivity, a lot of uh, success and happiness, a lot of satisfaction, right? 10 of cups. It was pretty good. But I think it became stagnant. I think it was, it was as good as it was going to get. And there was no room for anything more. There was no possibility for growth. There was no possibility to take things to another level. There was no going deeper. There was no further satisfaction that could be had because the 10 of cups is at the end of the road. All these cups are full. There's really nothing else to there, there's no other container. There's no room for anything else. There's no possibility of growth or expansion or increase in any way. Okay. So I think this is kind of the underlying thing. This was just, it's run its course. And we said that with the death card, that it's just, this was kind of a temporary thing. It's no one's fault. It just kind of is what it is. I think it's because there really is no more growth possible. There's nothing else available. Um, I think it has, um, it's reached its limit as far as the, the fulfillment, the satisfaction, the joy, the pleasure, the productivity, um, the benefits of this situation. There's nothing deeper. There's nothing more. There's nowhere else to go. So it's, it's run its course. It's time to move on. Again, I think this might be that four of wands because it feels like this is a cycle that's wrapping up. 
you know, feels like this is um, kind of the, the final stages of this association, this relationship, and it's time to move on from it. What we see above everything is kind of, you know, complementary to this 10 of cups, and that's the nine of cups. This is the pursuit of happiness. This is wanting a situation. I think this is, this is above the path of the dove, right? So this is what you are consciously aspiring to. This is what you're looking for. You're looking for a type of relationship, again, romantic, platonic, professional, personal, either way. You're looking for an association that will always have room for more growth, right? That there's always kind of the next stage that we can always go deeper, better, stronger, more productive. Um, there's always something to learn. There's always something to gain. There's always forward progress. With the Ten of Cups, it's as full as you're going to get, right? There's, no, there's nowhere else to go. But with the Nine here, it's always kind of one cup short. But that's kind of the better way to do it, right? If all your cups are filled, kind of get a tire of it. There's really nothing, there's no more challenge. There's nothing to strive for. But with the Nine of Cups, there's always a little bit room left for more. So there's something to strive for. And this is the pursuit of that, of that fulfillment, pursuit of that happiness. And the, the joy really is in the journey, not in the destination. Like I say, once you become sugar, you can no longer taste sugar. And this Nine of Cups is after the experience of sugar, the tasting, right? Not the acquiring, not the becoming, not the complete 100% satisfaction, but it's in the pursuit, it's in the experience of these, these things, these desires, these, um, this progress that you're after, you know? So I think that is why we're on this forward path with the Death Card, the Four of Swords, and the Hanged Man. Okay, I think the Hanged Man is coming, and you're going to be in a rather uncomfortable position having to, you know, do this final, this final conversation, this exit interview, whatever you want to call it, whatever domain of life this is occurring, there still is that final kind of event that's going to be the closure to everything, and it's not going to be fun. Right? It's not going to be enjoyable, but you have to do it because your highest aspiration is happiness, is fulfillment, is the pursuit of happiness and fulfillment, right? So you have to endure this uncomfortable position, this, you know, um, period of suffering is necessary. And that's for the closure, that's for the uh, just the complete resolution of this. Because this week, though, this week is the period of rest and recuperation and not, not dealing with this thing, right? You're taking a little bit of a mental break from it with this card. So it's like this, this death energy has been happening, the relationship has dissolved, um, and now it's just that kind of that calm period. You get to gather yourself, rest, you know, get your strength back, get organized, have that mental break, and then you can have that final interview, that final conversation, the closure that the two of you need. If this is with a business or, or a company, uh, it'll be that final interview. If this is a romantic relationship, then the two of you may meet in a week or two and just have the closure, have the, you know, kind of cordial handshake at the end and it'll be done. You'll both be very relieved. Um, it's going to be an uncomfortable meeting, though. Let me just say that. Let's move over to the path of the serpent now and see if we can get an idea of the rest of the energy that's involved here. Um, I do want to kind of skip ahead and go directly to the relationship card. I think that this is the other person, the other entity involved. I think it's an air sign person. Um, if it's a, a personal relationship, if this is a romantic thing, which really, honestly, I don't see a huge indication that it is romantic. It's not really, it's not really telling me one way or the other. Okay, still kind of on the fence about that. But if it is a romantic relationship, I think they're an air sign person. Uh, I think the the communication between the two of you was never really on par. It was never you were never on the same page with this person. It's almost like the two of you had very different communication styles. Um, or your interests were just so different that the two of you didn't have a lot of overlap. 
Okay, And this could still apply to the professional relationship too. Um, if this is representative of the, the company that you work for, the business associate that you have to split with, uh, the same kind of thing. The communication just was never, you could never get in sync with the communication. Okay, it's like one person was always trying to catch up with the the ideas or the with the the words, you know, really the ideas of the other person, and it was going back and forth. It was playing phone tag. It was playing like um, always playing catch up, but with the ideas, with the communication. Okay, so someone was always kind of lacking behind, and then the other person would fall behind, and there was just never the rhythm, never the harmony in the communication, the sharing of ideas, the sharing of information. And the expression, right? The self-expression. So it was just kind of a mess in terms of that. And we're going to skip back here to your general energy. The six of discs. You're looking for a situation that has that harmony. You're looking for a relationship, either personal or professional, wherever this is taking place. You want that harmony. You want everything to be in alignment. You want everyone to be on the same page. You want someone that is on par with you uh, intellectually, uh, spiritually, emotionally. You want to have this possibility for further growth, expansion, right? More fulfillment, always thinking ahead, always striving for something more and greater and, and deeper, more meaningful. Um, so it's really a problem that this this person or this, you know, could be a, an entity, a, a company, a corporation, whatever. They're not really in harmony with you. There just was this, you're just out of phase with each other. And it seemed like it was always like that. Nobody's fault, just two different styles, two different personalities, two different energies. Okay. Um, but this is really what you're after. I think you're someone that likes order, that likes organization that likes peace and harmony, that likes things to flow. And this reminds me of this Leo energy, this lust or strength card, because this is that fixed fire. You want things to be fixed. You want there to be a steady routine, a steady organization, steady flow and rhythm. You want that harmony, right? And the six here is the doubling of the three. So if we take the three of pentacles, right? That's your inner work ethic. That's the inner harmony that you have, right? Your own kind of moral code, your own personal code of ethics, your principles, uh, and your commitment, your devotion to this orderly, systematic, very organized, very rhythmic kind of work that you do, right? Um, and again, it could be in a romantic setting. And you expect the other person, right? The, the kind of the mirror of this, the three of discs down here is going to be mirrored in the three of discs um, in the outer world, in the other, right? What is not, not you. And you expect the same kind of code of ethics and, and work ethics, the principles and the standards and the flow and the harmony. Um, you want some situation, a relationship, another person, etc., that is going to harmonize with you in that way. And I don't think this is, I don't think this was that kind of relationship for you. It was still a very beneficial relationship. Okay. I mean, we have the, the 10 of cups down here uh, and with that death card, you know, I think it just, the relationship, this situation, um, grew as much as it could. It, it flourished, it, it matured. Um, it kind of just reached old age and is dying off now. And that's just the natural cycle. Okay, so again, it's nobody's fault. Um, it's not because anybody really did anything wrong. It's just that it it went as far as it could. And that literally is, is it. Um, there was this communication issue, but again, this is no one's fault. This is just two different styles. You know, two different people or two different personalities. Whoops. Two different forms of energy that just aren't in sync and that's that's no one's fault um the next card is your fears worries and concerns card and this is an eight of swords i think this this is kind of something that um i think we've had this in the recent past for you and in, in some of our past readings um this kind of this apprehension maybe 
uh, a little bit of a concern or an anxiety over this communication, right? I think communication is really such a big deal for you, especially, you know, we saw that a little bit here with the, the six of pentacles, the kind of harmony and, and success and uh, the resonance that you're, you're kind of expecting. I think you're really worried about being misunderstood. I think there's a, the, the ability to share your ideas, the ability for you to express yourself and have other people understand you and accept you and, and listen and um, be able to have those kinds of conversations with you. That's really important to you. So the Eight of Swords here is kind of um, setting up some really high expectations for other people. Right. I think you, you really do have a high standard and you want other people to be on the same page as you, to be able to at least understand and vibe with your ideas, you know, but I think that it's more often than not a, a disappointment. Um, I think that you have this very high bar for other people and for yourself as well. I mean, you know, I think that you are, you're not asking for anything that you're not willing to offer yourself, right? But I think it's such a high standard that it ends up kind of backfiring on you, that you may find yourself with not that many of these kinds of relationships that you're after. These, um, like your intellectual match or, or someone that can Someone that can share in your communication style. Someone that can just vibe and resonate and harmonize with you. Because with this, this Eight of Swords, it's kind of a situation that we create ourselves. And there could, be, there could be a little bit of a tendency for you to have such a high standard or high expectations um, as a way to keep people away a little bit. It's kind of a, a defensive you know, fence around yourself. Okay. I'm kind of feeling like this is, um, you know, almost like a, a barbed wire fence that you're, you've surrounded yourself with. And if someone's not able to climb over that fence or jump over it or fly over it or whatever, then they just, they just can't get near you. So I think this is a little bit of an intellectual barrier that you might be putting up um, to, keep, to keep people away. And I think the reason for that is this Five of Cups, because you've been disappointed in people. You've had relationships that uh, seem fine in other ways, but there's just this, this inability for, the, for two people to communicate all the time. You know, I think it's something that you've run into fairly often. Um, and I don't mean in just that you feel like you're smarter than everybody. That's not what I'm saying. Um, I, I'm thinking more of the being misunderstood um, or, or attempting to communicate your ideas and share your ideas and just the other people don't seem to always vibe with it. It's not a, an intelligence thing. It's not a superiority thing. It's just the sharing of ideas. It's like you have to find some like-minded individuals. You have to find the, the right group of people that, that share some of the similar interests as you. Because we, we were talking about that in this particular relationship, that there doesn't seem like there was a lot of overlap. You know, and I really feel like that's the case. And that leads to some disappointment for you. You know, it leads to some feeling like you're, you're missing out on something or, or that you're lacking these kinds of relationships where you can really connect with people and share your ideas with them. Okay. Um, I really think it, it has to do with the, the mental intellectual connections. And I think that leads to this disappointment. And I think that as long as we're building this kind of chain link or, or barbed wire fence around us, um, it's not going to be easy for other people to get through. And I'm not really advocating that you change your standards, lower your standards, or cut your expectations. I'm just trying to point out what the energy is. But in no way am I telling you what to do or, or how to interact with people or what kinds of what kind of standards or expectations to set for yourself and for other people, right? Uh, because I do, you know, I do think that your aspiration is this pursuit of happiness. You're trying to fulfill yourself in every way possible. The Nine of, of Cups is about the physical, mental, and emotional fulfillment. The pursuit of that happiness and all of that 
uh, together kind of creates this, you know, spiritual fulfillment, right? Um, I'm still wondering about this mystery card. Haven't forgotten about it. We'll get to that in a minute. But I want to just, you know, I want to explore this a little bit with this this mental energy. Because the, the Eight of Swords really is like uh, kind of a mental prison that we put ourselves in. It's almost like we are kind of sabotaging ourselves. Like we are maybe putting out these tests that almost no one can pass. You know, it's these expectations that we know very few people are going to, uh, to meet up, to, to meet, you know, to reach. And that keeps people away. So it kind of is like this fence that we have around us that is really impossible to, cl to climb. It's impossible to, uh, to cut it, get through it, and, and kind of get close to you. So it is a little bit of an, of an intellectual, a mental barrier that you have. And again, that goes back to our Leo energy, this stubbornness, this ability to really withstand things for a long time. Even if they're uncomfortable, it's just this stubbornness that you have, you know, and a little bit of that Leo pride. Um, so I think that these, some of these energies need to be considered this week because, you know, it seems like this is... Maybe not the first time this kind of what we see on the path of the dove here. Maybe it's not the first time that this has really taken place. And again, I don't think it's anyone's fault. I don't think it's because you have your standards too high. Nothing like that. Um, I think this is just a relationship that has run its course. Again, professional or personal, it doesn't matter either way. And in your pursuit of your highest fulfillment, pursuit of your happiness, it's time to move on from this. Okay, but what we see on the path of the serpent here is some of these more subjective tendencies, these more kind of beneath the surface things, these energies that, you know, might be contributing to um, cycles like this, you know. But let's take a look at this confirmation card and see. I still think maybe this will be that four of wands, you know, showing that this is just a cycle that needs to be wrapped up. But I think now, I think it's going to be a little bit deeper than that. I think there's a lot more going on here than just, hey, this this partnership is, is done this week, you know, and you get a little bit of a mental break and then you've got to have that final interview, have that, that closure conversation. But what we see now is this princess of cups. So, you know, we... We end it, we, you know, there's a pretty nice amount of cups here. There's some water energy. We had the, the nine and the ten of cups over here. We had the five of cups over here. And now we have the beginning of some new kind of emotions, some new f meaning, perhaps, you know. Maybe it is related to this eight of swords. Maybe it is this kind of mental barbed wire fence that we have, this razor wire that we've surrounded ourselves with to keep people out, right? Maybe if we re-evaluate re this, right? We think, we think about this a little bit. See if we can change this in some way. Maybe it will open you up to some new sources of enjoyment, sources of pleasure, deeper meaning, deeper connections with people, you know? And again, I'm not saying to lower your standards. I'm not saying that you should cut your expectations. I'm saying that we might need to make it a little bit easier for people to pass our tests, right? Maybe we should um, create the, the game in such a way that it is, it is winnable, you know? No one wants to play a game where there's literally no way to win. You know, I'm, I'm not a gamer, but I know a lot of people are, and I, I enjoyed video games when I was a kid. And if there's no possibility of winning, we don't want to make it too easy. But if there's no possibility of getting through that fence, no one's going to want to play. So there might be a little bit of that going on. I know this was kind of, kind of a stretch. I'm not sure if this is resonating with anyone. But I know that there's the possibility for new experiences, new sources of meaning, joy, pleasure, connections. And I think that you are striving for this happiness and fulfillment. And this... Princess of Cups is just yet another way that you can strive for this fulfillment, this meaning, this happiness. Okay. Um, and I think this is coming. I think this, you know, it, it may take the form of a water sign person. It could, yeah. 
Um, but I think that this card is more than representing another person. I think it's representing opportunities for new connections, new meaningful connections that will lead to your pursuit of happiness and fulfillment. Um, provided that we do something about this, because I think this is, this is really, and I think you're really that stubborn, prideful Leo that, you know, um, even if you think maybe you're wrong, maybe, I know, I know it's unlikely, but maybe, if maybe you're wrong, that you should reevaluate this Eight of Swords. But I don't know that, that it's really going to happen. It might. It might. We're going to take a look in the Extended and see if we can get a little more info out of these, these energies. If you want to become a member to the channel, click on the link in the description box. I do personal readings as well. Uh, this was your weekly tarot reading January 8th through 14th on Dove and Serpent Tarot.